Next caller, what's up? Hey, what's up, Uncle Steve? This is your favorite nephew, Marcus, out here in Richmond, California. Can you please explain yeah, to the young you men out you. there and young women that sex doesn't need to be longer than 11 minutes to be pleasurable? Because there's a bad misconception out here that sex needs to be at least 45 minutes. And as a working man, ain't nobody got time for 45 minutes. We got to get to sleep and go to work. Thank you. My brother, you are not Bernie Mac. Three minutes. That's all I'm giving you. That's all I got. Oh, I don't care about you talking about me. No, you're not Bernie Mac, bro. It's embarrassing. Now, it's happened. Moments where you just don't, you know, like Martin Lawrence said in stand up, run till that. No, no, no. One potato, two potato, three potato trying to hold off. Now, that happens to every man. But that can't be the norm, my brother. You going to look at a woman and tell her all you given is 11 minutes? You going to mention that publicly? You have some serious deficiencies in your ability to provide what needs to be provided. If I was a woman, I wouldn't give you none. Hell, if that's the case, beat yourself for 11 minutes. Call it a day. I wouldn't give you a damn thing. Cheap ass. 11 minutes, you can do better. Get it together. Next caller, what's up? What's up, Steven? It's, uh, it's your boy Austin again. Um, I was wondering if I'm on a dry spell right now, you know, with, with the females, with the ladies, you feel me? What do I got to do to get out of this dry spell, man? It's, it's been going on a, you know, nice, you know, 19 years without any play, man. So, uh, what? To tell me, I need you to, you know, tell me what to do to get out of this dry spell. Cause I'm only 19 years old and uh, it, oh. it's looking pretty. Oh, you're only 19 right years now, old. Uh, not looking too good. So okay, stop, 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 cut, cut, cut them off. First of all, these messages are too damn long. I'm limiting y'all to 20 seconds from now on. Y'all getting on my damn nerves with these long ass messages. Stop it. Stop it. Get to your point. Secondly, you sound high. You sound high. Either high or you were high and just getting out of it. That's how you sound. Okay, I don't know whether it's true or not, but that's how you sound. Thirdly, you scared the living hell out of me because you indicated that it's been 19 year drought. Like it's 19 years you've been without. I was like, yo, you just don't have it, brother. You just don't have it. Ain't no excuse for no 19 year drought. But you said you're 19 years old. So first of all, you're lying. It's not a 19-year drought, 19-year drought. What, you wanted a woman when you were one? And then five? And then eight? Hell's wrong with you. Stop being stupid, okay? Now, let's get to the nitty-gritty. Probably got horny by the time you're about 13, 14 years old. So, and you don't need to be doing anything before you're 16 or so. So I'm going to say a three-year drought. You don't have game. Here's why you don't have game. Because you put them to sleep before you even get a chance to be around them. Listen to how you talk. Where's your energy? Where's your vibrancy? Where's your interest, man? I mean, damn, you've got to interest them in you. You've got to give off some energy to get some, to get some energy. That's what you got to do. You can't sound lethargic and, and, and like you got to be awakened. You know, my sister once had a boyfriend and, um, not Carmen. I'm not going to say my sister's name because the guy's already going to know I'm talking about him. I'm not going to say his name either. But I can talk about him because I didn't like him. Okay? I'm not going to say his name, but I didn't like him. And I didn't want my sister with him under any circumstances. This was him. It could be a party going on. Everybody's having a good time. Hey, man, what's up? Hi. What's going on, man? How's life? It's not really that good. Well, damn, what's the matter? Everything. I said, oh, get rid of his ass. I mean, he just, 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 just bring you down. Remember that movie Silver Lining? When Bradley Cooper's talking to his boy and his boy is talking about his wife. She brings me down, man. Remember when he did that? That's what he did to everybody he encountered. No energy, no life, no vibrancy, just negativity. Nothing about him made you laugh. You got depressed. You was damn near ready to slit your wrist being around him. He had to go. I told my sister, I said, I said, listen, he can't be good. 
He can't be good. Because you got to be turned on before something actually happens. I mean, damn, get rid of him. He ain't going to be a loss. And she listened. So one time my sister listened. I was very proud of her because he needed to go. Next caller. What's up, Stephen A. Smith? It's Rob from New Jersey. Yeah. And I was wondering um, how you feel about the word Riz, which basically means how much game you have with the girl. Do you think it's stupid or do you think it's accurate? What? Just curious on your take on it. Cheers. What I think about Riz? Riz. Am I missing something? It means game. What kind of damn question is that? I I, I don't know. I don't know how to answer. I I, I I I do know how to answer it. That's just a dumbass question. Okay. I'm a grown ass man. Don't be calling up here giving me acronyms. I'm not some some little hood rat in the streets growing up as a teenager speaking a different language and stuff where my children got to come and explain to me what the hell y'all talking about. I'm a grown ass man. Speak in fluent, complete words and sentences. That's what I prefer. Okay? Riz. Means game. That would mean game. What the hell is that? You're a grown ass man. You spent time calling up to this show on hold for some ignorant ass question like that? See, that's where y'all in trouble. See, first take is a live television show which I'm very thankful and grateful that you all watch as religiously as you do. Thank you. But be clear on this show, which is mine. I take callers. Be clear. I will curse your ass out in a heartbeat. Anytime you annoy me, please know that. Please know that. Hey, Stephen A., this is your boy Jake from Jacksonville, Florida. I got a dilemma. This girl wants to come over to my house to watch a movie on Friday, but mm. I don't know what movie to choose. What would be your top three movies to have a successful night? You're the GOAT. I'll hang up and listen. Jake from Jacksonville, that was a very interesting question. Damn, that's a hard one off the top of my head. I, I, because I don't like listening to these calls. I want to, I, 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 you know, I, I want, I want, I want calls fresh in my ear. Okay, what movies should he watch with his girl? Well, that depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So I'm going to think along myself because, I mean, if you're with me, I'm, I'm trying to accomplish some things. So let me think, let me think, let me think. I'm going to say Jerry Maguire. You had me at hello. You had me at hello. You complete me. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say love and basketball. It's a tie. It's a tie. Between love and basketball with my brother Omar Epps. Okay. And Sinai Lathan. I'm going to say it's between that and Love Jones, Neil Long, Lorenz Tate, Day in the Rain. And she was like, you know, what about my job? I don't care about your job. What about me living? I don't care where you live. I don't care. I just want you. Yes. Yes. I'm going to say those two. So those are top three. I'm going to throw a sleeper out at you. And I'm not sure about this, but it's just a thought. Because I watched it several times and I really, really love it. Believe it or not, it's with Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz. Um, Night. My goodness. The movie. Damn it. Night and day. Night and day. That's it. Producer Jay just helped me that. Night and day. Right? With me, without me. With me, without me. With me, without me. And she ended the movie. With me, without me. With me, without me. And he's like, with you. They drove off. Beautiful movie. 
she was riding on a motorcycle. He flipped her around. He said, have at it. She shot those tires, shot them up. And he said, June Haven, you got skills. Yeah. You'll like that movie. None of those four will fail you. But my first three is what I would go with if I were you. Last question from Seattle, Washington. What's up? What up, Stephen A. Smith? My name is Mohammed. I'm from Seattle, Washington. And I want you to settle a debate for me. Who would you rather have, Steph Curry heading into this season or Trey Young? Mohammed, my brother. With respect. That's a dumbass question. What an idiotic question. Thank God you didn't show your face when you asked that question. Steph Curry or Trey Young? It's not even a question. It's Steph all day, every day. Trey Young's got work to do. He's a volume shooter. He doesn't shoot with the degree of accuracy as a Steph Curry. Steph Curry's the greatest shooter ever known to man. It's a dumb question. You could do better. I expect better from my callers because I will hang up on your ass. I'm just telling you. Hey, Steven. It's Andre Tyrone from New Jersey. I'm wondering what do you think about dating taller women? I'm about 5'4", and I've been dating girls about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, wondering what's your advice on this? <sighs> well, first of all, I mean, if you don't mind, the woman literally looking down on you physically because you're shorter than her. Ain't no problem with it. I mean, even though I'm, I, I'm a booty leg and hip man to the core, uh, you know, some men like taller women that, you know, beautiful legs and they looking up to her. me personally. I don't want to be looking up to my woman. I want to be looking up at her in terms of stature. I want to be looking up at her in terms of respect. I want to be looking up at her in terms of admiration, subliminally, figuratively speaking. But physically, I don't want to be walking down the street holding the hands with my woman and looking up at her. That's me. But hey, you can't help the fact that you're only 5'4". And if they taller than you, especially if they fine to you, because beauty's in the eye of the beholder, more power to you. It's women that don't mind walking around down the street holding the hands of those shorter men that, that may, I'm, I'm looking at her. I'm admiring you. Go for it, bro. Go for it. Look, look, hey. Hey. Height don't matter in the dark. Height don't matter in the dark. It don't matter in the light when you're laying down either. That's how I look at it. Go for it, bro. Go for it. I got one more question. Miami, Florida. Oh, who's this? Hey, Stephen A. Smith. I'm Bianca from Miami, Florida. I just have a quick question here. Uh, were you invited to Michael Rubin's July 4th party in the Hamptons? Sounds like it was a lot of fun. Also, uh, who do you think was the best dressed? Thank you very much, and I look forward to the answer. Bye. Well, somebody wasn't listening to me a few minutes ago. No, I wasn't invited, and Michael Rubin's going to hear about that. I wish I was invited. I would have gone, too. I really would have. But that's all right. It's all right. Um, best dressed. I mean, I didn't really see Beyonce's full outfit and stuff like that. She's always the best looking to me. J Lo was nice. Kim Kardashian. I just like, I like her style. Some of the stuff that she wears, it just accentuates what she wants accentuated. And I truly appreciate that. Some women try to accentuate certain things and the outfits they choose just don't work. That is not Kim Kardashian's problem. I got to give it to her. She just has that it factor when it comes to that. You know, I, you know, I've never seen it with makeup off and stuff like that. I can only go by what I see. But and J Lo is just the truth. And I'm so happy that her and Ben Affleck are cool. You were, you know, together and all this because I'm a Ben Affleck fan. The Accountant is one of my all time favorite movies. The Accountant. OK, so I got to give a lot of love 
uh, to Ben Affleck. But, um, hey, good question, though. Good question, though. But, I'm, I mean, but with me, it's hard because, I mean, this Kardashian, Beyonce, J-Lo. <sighs> I mean, unless you got Megan Good and Sinai Lathan in there, I don't know anybody I'd pick above those three. That's just me. You know, it's just me. I'm sorry. That's just how I am. Stephen A., it's uh, Noah from Milford, Connecticut here, and i got a question. So there's this girl I'm seeing. Everything's good about her, mm. except one thing. She thinks Jordan is the GOAT. I might just, like, have to break it off with her, Stephen A. Uh, I don't know. It's really questioning my morals here. I need a response. Thanks. So Noah calls and he's got a problem because he thinks his woman believes this woman he's feeling woman. He got love for a woman. He want to be with his problem with her is that Michael Jordan, the goat. Well, first of all, he is the goat. And when it comes to goats, there is only one excuse. A woman in your life that you've loved, that you've invested in, that you've given yourself to should have as an excuse for labeling somebody other than Michael Jordan, the GOAT. And that's if she looks at you and she says, baby, you're the GOAT. Now, if she does that, all is forgiven. If she doesn't, well, you might have to reexamine that relationship. Now, I wouldn't go too far because Jordan don't give a damn about you. He ain't going to sleep well at night. He ain't going to advise you to get rid of what's keeping you warm. Don't be stupid now. You understand? Don't be stupid now. Ain't nobody going to rush to keep you warm now. She dead. And if you got love for her and you was feeling her, she was doing something right. So if she's doing something right, let her keep doing that. And just incrementally, sporadically, Implement words of counsel as to who the goat should be. Then again, let me say this because it's very, very important. If you got to tell your woman you're the goat, instead of her telling you that, then you ain't the goat. Because when you are the goat, you don't have to wonder. She automatically lets you know. Let's get to calls. Who we got? Yo, Stephen A., I'm going to keep it short because I know you've get, been getting mad at people. Yes. So I just wanted to ask you, my name is Damon. You're already too long. Ivy, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. I want to know, how come you haven't responded to Devin Haney on July 1st? He tweeted out, F you, Stephen A., like, I want to know, you usually, you usually, re to, you usually re to will respond to something like that. Do you have any... Shut up, any shut up, cut him off, cut him off, cut him off, cut him off, cut him off. First of all, don't ever call this show again. I don't like your ass already because you lied. I'm going to keep it short because I know how you get irritated over... So first of all, you spent 20 seconds doing that. Then you spent an extra minute with your question. Don't call back because I don't like calls that damn long, number one. Number two. Hey, yo, what's up, Steve? What's up? This your boy. Hurry up. Is that? From the City of Angels. He's got five seconds. I got seconds. one question, Steve. Got five seconds. Four, I'm only 32 years old, three, man, and I got to use the two, honey pack. One. If you know what the honey pack get is. Get rid of them. See, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. This is my show. It's not yours. First of all, bro, you sound high. You sound zooty. You sound out your damn mind. I don't like that. I don't like people calling up to my show and inebriate it, not having their full faculties in order. Secondly, you get to your points quick. The audience is looking to hear from me. They ain't looking to hear from you. Don't take a year and a day to ask your questions. You know the number. Call back and make your questions quick. Get to the damn point. That's how I roll on this show. We ain't doing that. All right? Next caller. Hey, Stephen. Hey, this is Justin from L.A. I'm just calling in to ask, how come Kobe doesn't get talked enough when it comes to the GOAT debates? I just feel like he should get mentioned. 
uh, because he's the closest thing to Michael Jordan, in my opinion. Thank you. First of all, I appreciate that question, Justin, and I appreciate how expeditiously you asked the question. See, quick, in and out, in and out. Asked the question, made a quick point, out in 20 seconds. That's how you make a call to the Stephen A. Smith show. We ain't going to tolerate no damn soliloquies and dissertations. Ain't happening. To Justin's question about Kobe Bryant and why Kobe Bryant doesn't get consideration as the greatest of all time. You said it yourself because he's number two to Michael Jordan. And we know this. And so because of that, there's number reason, one reason. Number two, he's not even number one at his own position. Because he's second to Michael Jordan. And because he's second to Michael Jordan and his game mimicked Jordan in so many ways, but he was still deemed inferior to Michael Jordan, albeit not by much. That's why he doesn't get that level of consideration. That's why it's LeBron, it's Kareem, or it's MJ. Kareem, 19-time All-Star, six-time champion, six-time league MVP, all of that other stuff, all-time leading scorer he retired as before LeBron James surpassed him this past season. All of that happened. LeBron James is the all-time leading scorer. Now he's a four-time champion, four-time league MVP. Been to 10 NBA Finals. Just got at the Lakers to the Western Conference Finals. It wasn't his fault they got swept by the Denver Nuggets. I'm telling you that much. Anthony Davis needed to show up a bit more consistently. He drops 40 points in game one, 11 in game two. Need consistency. But those are the guys that warrant consideration before Kobe, even though Kobe's a five-time champion. Because three of those titles came with Shaq and his prime. Last caller. What you got? Stephen A. This is Nick Bedford in Baltimore. Yes. As a graduate from Morgan State University, so, okay. I have so much pride in my HBCU, HBCU, and I know you no do doubt. as well. Yeah. One quick question I have for you. Who threw the best fraternity parties? I know you're a member of the Mega Sci Fi fraternity, Big Q Dogs. So let me know who threw the best parties and why. Peace. I can't say. I can't say who threw the best parties, you know, um, of the frats. I can't. First of all, I'm never uh, mega sci-fi all day, all day, root dog, no doubt. On certain campuses, it was the Qs. On certain campuses, it was the Kappas. Sometimes it could be the Sigmas. That's what I could tell you. Okay, it depends. Me personally, I never paid attention to who was throwing the parties. I always paid attention to where. For example, you can go to a party at my alma mater, Winston-Salem State. It was pretty nice. It wasn't Bennett. Bennett was an all-girls college right in Greensboro. When you went to Bennett, the number of fine honeys outnumbered the ones at Winston-Salem State by at least five to one. When you went to A&T, the numbers were a bit more prolific. You went down to Spelman, yeah, but the problem with that is Morehouse right next door. They were all Spelman, all ladies, Morehouse, all men. And so, you know, it was going to be even. The numbers didn't necessarily work in your favor. So I'm just telling you that. To me, it wasn't about the fraternities. It was about who had the most honeys at the parties. And whoever had the most had the best parties. And depending on where you were, which state you were in, determined who had the most. It's really that simple. It really, really is. They could tell you otherwise. But they lying. When it came to the fellas, we didn't say Omega, Sci-Fi, Kappa, Sigmas. We didn't do that. We asked one question and one question only. Where was the party with the most honeys? That's what we asked. And that's all we cared about. I'm sure as things and times have evolved, they remain the same. I'm willing to bet my check in the year 2023. Fellas are still asking that question. Where are the honeys? Case closed. Next caller, what's up? What's up, Steven? 
Hi. My name is Angela, and I'm actually calling from Cancun, Mexico Come right now. Star. But my Come question for you is, yeah. if there was one thing that you could change about the world to make it a better place, a better world, what is something that you would change and why? And that's my question. Thank you. I appreciate that call, Angela, and I appreciate that question. If there's one thing in the world that I would change is the existence of racism of any sort. At the end of the day, treat all of God's creatures like they're God's creatures, particularly human beings, of course. I wish there was no racism. I wish there was no misogynism. I wish there was no xenophobia. I wish there was no homophobia. I wish there was no transphobia. I wish that we focused on equality. I often tell white folks in America, because that is the power structure in this country, they still make up 58.9% of the population. They still have the most powerful positions in the world. I often tell white folks this. You want to eradicate the problems that exist between you and other communities? Treat white people the same way you treat them. Like, for example, when we had some police officers, by the way, all of whom were not white, and they were shooting on on black men, as egregious and uncalled for and wrong and criminal as that was, it would have been a entirely different reaction if we saw the same thing happen in the whites too. When a white man is in Oklahoma City, running or driving away in a speed chase away from the cops and shooting out of his window at the cops. But he somehow gets arrested, not shot. When Dylan Roof goes into a church in South Carolina and kills nine people who are worshiping. And not only do you arrest him instead of shoot him, but you stop him at Burger King, a Burger King on the way to jail to get him a burger because he's hungry. But unarmed black men were getting shot. That's a problem. And that points to racism, whereas if it had happened to white folks just the way it happened to black folks and that stuff had been chronicled, then it would have been citizens against law enforcement as opposed to black versus white. The same principle applies in every walk of life, including corporate America. If you treat people equally, whether it's good or bad, problems are easily identified less of a position to be argumented and debated and in a better position to be resolved. When you focus on equality, that's why I say racism, because even though that's black and white and the other things aren't necessarily black or white, racism is the foundation of it all. It breeds from that. Because once racism was prevalent in the mind's eye of folks in this country and throughout this world, people started saying, OK, what about our issues, which is where the other issues came forward? Let's do what we can to negate that. And that will help make the world a better place. Hey, Stephen A., this is uh, Jonathan Pike out of Chicago, Illinois. My question to you is, what is who is your top five? Black quarterbacks of all time in the NFL. Ooh. My top five black quarterbacks of all time. Well, first of all, it's easy. First of all, it's Patrick Mahomes. That's number one. That's the easy one to pick right there. It's Patrick Mahomes. It's Patrick Mahomes. Man, I don't want to forget anybody. We got Steve McNair. We got Donovan McNabb. We got Randall Cunningham. Oh, my God. Who am I missing? Michael Vick. Um, I wouldn't put him in the top five, though. Um... Uh, 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 Deshaun Watson, Jalen Hurts, and what he's doing. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, Doug Williams, no, he's not in there, even though first black quarterback to win the Super Bowl title. Yeah. I'm going to put Donovan McNabb as the top five. I'm going to put Warren Moon as the top five. Help me, Gaff. Am I missing anybody? Dante Culpepper? I, he got to be considered. Dante Culpepper got to be considered. Steve McNair got to be considered. Oh, oh. So I said Patrick Mahomes, I said Donovan McNabb, I said 
Who's the third one I said? Who's the third one I said? Warren Moon. Okay. Ooh. Damn, this is tough. I know I'm going to forget somebody. I'm go- I know I'm going to forget somebody. My sister Sumatra just handed me the list. See, that's why she's an assistant extraordinaire. That's what she does. Give a brother an assist. I appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. I'm looking at some names here throughout history. Warren Moon, Steve McNair, uh, James Shaq Harris. I remember him. Dante Culpepper. You mentioned him, Gaff. Cordell Stewart. You can't forget him. Oh. Mm-mm-mm. I'm going to have to go with just based on talent, y'all. I'm going to have to go with Patrick Mahomes. No particular order, but he's definitely number one. Patrick Mahomes, Donovan McNabb, Warren Moon, Dante Culpepper, and Steve McNair couldn't run like Randall Cunningham, Michael Vick. Nobody could run like him. I said, like, oh, hell, you know, you know. I got to put Lamar Jackson up in there. I got to put Lamar Jackson up in there. I, I got to do that. I got to do that. All right, so that's four. Man. One could argue that Deshaun Watson got to do a little bit more. He's probably better. But do you give him the nod over a Dante Culpepper who used to throw the ball of Randy Moss or a Steve McNair? You know, I don't know if you give him the edge over that. So it's got to be one of those two. I got to think about that. All right. 